industry, coal and gas power stations and transport are all sources of carbon dioxide and other gases that cause global warming. The Scottish Government has set ambitious targets to reduce the country's emissions year on year with the aim of cutting greenhouse gases by 40% by 2020. That's compared to a base year of 1990. And they are already well on their way with emissions 24% down since 1990, although much of this was achieved not by a deliberate green agenda but by deindustrialisation. In 2010, the economy was as chilly as the weather and usually recessions bring with them a decrease in greenhouse gases as people try to reduce bills in their homes and businesses. So it seems all the more surprising that the snow brought more than transport chaos in its wake. Well, the Minister for Climate Change, Stuart Stevenson, is in our Edinburgh studio. So, Stuart Stevenson, the lesson from this seems to be we can't reduce climate change or, climate, or greenhouse gas emissions if there's a cold winter. Well, it was an exceptionally cold winter. It was essentially a year which had six months of winter, uh, three, three and a half months at the beginning of the year, two, two and a half months at the end of the year. It was uh, the coldest uh, respective period since uh, 100 years ago. Yeah, right. But, so, but, but I, I run of them and your climate change targets wouldn't be worth the paper they're written on. Well, what we've seen is that we've been making a lot of the key changes that will deliver in the longer term. The latency period, how long it takes for the benefits to kick in of, for example, raising the number of houses that are, meet uh, energy efficiency targets, uh, standards by 7% uh, over the, the year 2009-2010, that's big. Increasing tree planting by 50% by 2009, 2010. These are all the actions that are sensible right. government but, but something you, climate change. Fine, but there, there's something even bigger, isn't there? Which is that um, uh, there was a sharp fall in the in the year before the one we we're talking about because we're in the middle of a recession. You would expect there's been a fall in, I think, world greenhouse gas emissions because of the recession. Um, therefore, if the economy ever picks up, you would expect that alone to, to lead to a substantial rise in gas emissions here in Scotland as well as everywhere else. It's a fair point you make, but what we've actually seen in 2010 is that we have moved further ahead of our colleagues elsewhere in the United Kingdom while simultaneously having higher levels of employment. In other words, where the actions of the Scottish Government have ensured that we've been less hard hit by the recession than has been the case south of the border, and yet we've increased the gap with the rest of the UK and I think that in part, substantial part, is down to the actions we've been taking, many of which deliver the benefits for the climate change agenda over the longer run, whereas weather is something that is immediate, happens now, right. and you, you can predict against averages, you can build in allowances for worse than average weather, but 2010 okay. was a most right. exceptional year. Um, can, can you just explain what's going on here? Since the turn of the century, uh, greenhouse gases from power supply seem to have fallen by a, about 20%, right? Uh, that, that presumably is because of renewable energy, yeah? Uh, we, had in two we, we have in 2011, we're now generating 35% of our domestic right, okay. consumption from but, renewable But, but residential emissions have, have barely changed at all since the beginning of the century. Uh, largely in residential settings, what we're using is we're using fossil fuels. And in particular in 2010, we saw a dramatic increase in the burning of gas. We already know that in 2011 for the United Kingdom, the amount of gas being burnt in domestic uh, set, uh, overall has dropped by a quarter. And that illustrates precisely the very rapid response there was in 2010 to the very serious weather conditions that we experienced and the reliance that we continue to have heating and office heating on gas, yeah, which is, okay, of course, okay, a greenhouse gas emitter. F fine. Uh, business emissions have gone down very sharply since 1990, which is when you choose to start your base period from. That is according to your own documents, largely because Ravenscraig closed and a nitric acid manufacturing plant in Leith moved to Ireland, where it's presumably producing just as much uh, carbon dioxide as it was, as it was here. Um, so we, we've had a fall on that, but it's got nothing to do with anything to do with government policy. Um, we've had nothing happening in, in 
in, in households. And we've had, admittedly, a, a fall in power, in, in, in power supply, but that's because of renewables. Uh, so where do you get your other half of the emissions falls that are in your targets? Well, let, let me just say the 1990s, the Kyoto Protocol International Standard, so we all compare with each other. But in, in households, we saw between 2009 and 2010 a move from 55% of households that met appropriate standards for energy efficiency to 62%. 7% in a single year is a very substantial increase. And of course, it, that's not really showing up in the term. figures, though, is it? Well, that's precisely my point that you make these changes uh, over the course of a year. Yeah. Very significant changes indeed, but the period in which they start to feed but, but, food to but your you figures is longer. Fine, you haven't answered my question, which is that given you'd a big one-off factor because of Ravenscraig and this other thing, and I mean, it, what is the plan? You're going to have to, I mean, to get anywhere near your targets, you're going to have to close what some coal or gas power stations. I mean, well, it, you're going to have to do something pretty radical. Well, let me say, of course, we've seen the figures go down every year this century, apart from 2006, where they rose a bit. So we are on a trajectory that takes us to the 40%, a 42% reduction that we've set as our target uh, for 2020. And the actions we're taking in forestry and housing, the huge investments we're making in the railway system to get more people to commute by rail, electrification of the rail network, the number of activities we are oh, taking is okay. very substantial and will deliver in the long term. All right, Stuart Stevenson, thanks very much indeed. Well, the Scottish Greens' Patrick Harvey is here in the studio. What do you make of this explanation? It was very cold. Well, I'd love to have been sat around the Cabinet table when jaws were dropping as ministers were given the revelation that sometimes in Scotland we have cold winters. You know, we've known for a very long time that when there are cold uh, winters, to, to, emissions to, will to, go up. To be fair, up. hang on, if, let's just think back. In 2010, the winter of 2019, it was cold right into March. And then it started, if you remember again, really early. I mean, November and December were some of the coldest months we've had in, in, in years. So it's, it's not completely unreasonable. It's clearly been a cold winter, yes. But cold winters will happen. And, you know, what we need if we're, if we're going to be ready for that kind of thing, if we're going to be able to achieve carbon reductions in the face of cold winters as well as milder winters, is a massive programme of investment in the housing stock so that people don't have to pay through the nose to the big energy companies. So, do, to do keep you not buy warm. Stuart Stevens' argument that their figures are, are on track to get to where they, they want to get to? I mean, even, even that figure, although it went up in 2010, there was a big fall the year before terrible recession, um, even though it went up, it was still lower than, than, than two years before that. There was a fall in the previous year due to economic circumstances. There's a rise this year, I would say, due to inaction. A few years ago, a good few years ago, you may remember we had to vote against a very controversial budget when the government, even after months of pressure, not just from us, but from a huge range of other organisations, refused to commit to the national programme of investment in the housing stock that we need to see. We've only just in the last month or so finally got the government to agree to a programme along those lines. If we'd had that in place years ago, we'd have been a lot further forward. We'd have been reducing our energy bills in the face of a cold winter and reducing our carbon emissions at the same time. Okay. Do you think, I mean, look, when it comes to falls in emissions, there was a big one off factor because of the closure of Ravenscraig and some other closure of some other industry. When everyone in Scotland goes, oh, we're terribly good on renewable power generation, that was very largely as well because we had hydro uh, before we started putting up wind turbines. If you strip out these factors, do you think Scotland can really claim to be the paragon of virtue in these matters that, that it generally does claim to be? I think there are two things that we need if we're going to claim to be progressive on climate change. One is ambition, and that ambition has been shown not just by the SNP government, but by the whole parliament in adopting radical agenda on, on targets as well as a climate justice no, I'm programme. Just curious, but though, the if second it, thing you if need you agree... is the programme of action alongside, and okay. that's what's been but missing. I, no, I'm just curious about where we are now. If you strip these special factors out, do you think that makes a substantial difference or do you agree with Stuart Stevenson when he says, oh, well, Luke, you know, even taking that into account, we're doing pretty well? No, across the broad sweep of history, you know, Scotland has had historically high emissions and has reduced those through deindustrialisation, which 
came with a huge amount of social problems and social consequences. It's not been the result of, of government policy on climate change. The opportunity that the Climate Change Act gave us was to accelerate that reduction through progressive measures, measures that would benefit a sustainable economy as well as uh, a fair but, but, and equal society. But, but, uh, as and that's what we've, not what we've seen. Right, as matters stand, you've just told us you want a further programme of action. But this goal of over 40% reduction uh, by 2020, um, do you think that can be achieved without taking the kind of further action that you want? Oh, it can't be achieved without taking more radical action, absolutely. But it can be achieved. The UK Climate Change Committee, the advisory committee for, for both governments, UK and Scottish governments, thinks it can be achieved. But you think that the their present course isn't going to get there? think it can be achieved. No, steady as she goes is not the way to achieve this, this transformation. You know, if you think about renewables, you mentioned, and, and Stuart Stevenson talked about the increase in renewable, renewables, fantastic, love to see increase in renewable energy. But that's to provide energy. It doesn't in itself cut emissions. Burning less fossil fuels cuts emissions and we need the renewable energy to come in to replace that. And Stuart St Stevenson just accepted that we see an increase in gas burning and his government is committed to supporting uh, another 50 years of oil and gas extraction. They want to squeeze out every, every last drop of fossil fuels. We need to be shifting away from fossil fuels, not okay. just adding renewables into the mix. Battery